I want to bring in the former Governor-General, Sir Peter Cosgrove. He's the chair of Biz Rebuild. This is the charitable arm of the Business Council of Australia. He's been out touring some of these areas, assessing the damage to local businesses and what help they need. He joins me now from Mullumbimby. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Uh, I suppose what we have is, in particular with business, you know, people think first and foremost about people's homes, but businesses are often a little bit lower lying, so they can get hit really hard. What have you seen in, in Mullumbimby, for example? Oh, Tom, I'm standing outside the recovery centre here in uh, Mullum, Mullum Bimby, uh, to Mullum to the locals, and uh, it's busy, as you can see. People coming and going, uh, accessing the support that is available through the traditional programs, you know, the, the Red Cross and, uh, and Vinnie's, Salvo's, uh, government, of course. Uh, we stand for business, and the reason we do that is that local businesses are just as severely affected as uh, uh, people living their ordinary lives. So we're here to support the businesses so that they can re-establish and get back underway without delay. This is the charitable arm, as you pointed out, of the Business Council of Australia. We call it Biz Rebuild. And our, the job we take on is to see what we can do by providing our, our vouchers, which amount to cash, to get people back on their feet in terms of small businesses back providing their services to their customers. Without that, the glue that the community relies on is absent and communities can fragment. We saw that over those devastating bushfires a couple of years ago, mm. more recent floods, and this devastating once-in-a-lifetime flood that we're dealing with now. So this is why the pace of all of this matters, right? When you talk about locals getting out there and getting into shops and businesses staying in the town, if things aren't looking up soon after a disaster, that's when people get their insurance payouts... They wonder if they're going to stick around. I, I know Mullum Bimby or Mullum, um, as you mentioned, I, I've got a, a friend there, actually, an old schoolmate that's starting up a business, and it was this really popular growing area. If that momentum, um, you know, doesn't stay in the community, suddenly you've got a situation where people might not keep their business there. You're spot on. You've summed it up. That's the way uh, we think as well. And we get big business uh, or bigger and capable businesses all around Australia to kick the tin, provide money, uh, they can do so uh, uh, with a tax break. Also, individuals, you know, people who uh, uh, have some money that they want to uh, put to a very good and immediate use, give the money into Biz Rebuild, and we have a very quick system of providing it to businesses that just need that injection of immediate support to re-equip, to get a business advice and open their doors for business. Uh, so we're doing that here and throughout the flood-affected regions. So we know they need cash. Is there anything else in conversations you've had that, that people are crying out for that people might be able to provide uh, beyond just money? Yeah, we, we've, yeah, we've had 250 or more applications now and the money or the vouchers are rolling out. We provide vouchers because that's the best way to get the money spent locally in the disaster area. So we promote that uh, currency of business between people we need and people who can supply. So... Uh, we have got several million dollars uh, uh, that we are dispersing and we want to move it as quickly as possible through our voucher system. We're easy to access through our website, Biz Rebuild. Look it up on Google and make your application. All right. Well, th there's good advice. Um, I might pass my uh, friend onto that website because he said um, he's not too badly affected, but, you know, um, everyone's you know, picking up from scratch here at the moment, I suppose. When you've looked more broadly beyond Mullumbimby, how bad does this disaster rate? What we keep hearing about in particular is Lismore in particular has just been smashed by these fires. That's our next... Uh, Tom, that's our next stop. We're off to Lismore. I know we're going to be devastated, as everybody who's seen it on television will have, will have already noted. But it's my, my perception that what you see from the air is a floodplain. What you see on a television screen is that which is within the the camera's uh, ground grasp. We're going to see, looking up and down the CBD, devastation and people desperately in need of a hand. So first impressions mm. will be profound impressions and uh, I can assure you we'll redouble our efforts, uh, no doubt, after we've seen Lismore. You mentioned what you see is a floodplain and this is the concern. We've got a lot of people cleaning up for the second time in a couple of years or the second time in 10 years in yep. Queensland and whether we need to rethink 
where we're rebuilding and if we're building in the same areas, how we do it. How pressing an issue is this for people that, that maybe we need a, a really big strategic rethink in Australia on this? It's very interesting. I mean, you, you, we're all uh, subject to being Monday morning quarterbacks to think after the event. Um, mm. Should people have built there? Shouldn't they have taken into account floodplain uh, issues and all that sort of thing? But who could have predicted or uh, comprehended that there would be such an enormous inundation? Who could have predicted? So I understand and I can sympathise with people saying, oh, should we rebuild there? Um, but uh, in the lottery of life, I, I don't want to try to be an expert myself and simply say, this time we find our fellow Australians in desperate need. Let's help them and let science and politicians and other leaders uh, get together and work out what should be done next. The need is now yep. and the logic of what we do next has to wait. OK, well, you know, and I guess perhaps it's, it's up to them if we're going to to do this differently, understand what you're saying in terms of certainly it doesn't preclude people helping right now. What about, just finally, um, you've got a bit of experience in this um, area. The ADF is increasingly being called out to these natural emergencies. Do you think we need a specialist yep. unit within the ADF? Because we're also living in a very heightened national security atmosphere at the moment. Do yep. we need a, maybe a specialist sort of reservist unit yep. that, that does this stuff almost full time? Uh Tom, it's a, it's a very topical question and you, I, I uh, opined on this in the last week or so. Uh, I believe the ADF is, uh, should be uh, quite simply uh, dedicated to its uh, uh, warfighting role. That is to hopefully deter conflict ever occurring, but when that occurs to be expert and therefore better at it and safer at it than uh, their opponent. So I, I'm reluctant to see the ADF itself specialise in disaster relief. But I do, I am attracted to the notion of having uh, under the government's hand, both state and federal, uh, people who can backfill those wonderful people who are locals. That is the uh, fire and rescue, regional fire service, uh, the um, SES, those people, they're fantastic. But what I see about them is that uh, they will need reinforcement at early, early stages after there's been a natural disaster. I think regionally based federally funded response forces, disaster relief for forces, uh, who are expert in the sort of skills, you know, uh, handling small boats, fi uh, fi um, firefighting drills, all those sort of things, uh, even uh, operating with helicopters. Those sort of skills are very important and maybe we can contemplate having something like that going forward. OK. Look, we appreciate your time. You know it's a busy one. We'll let you get it back out there and talk to local Sir Peter Cosgrove from Biz Rebuild. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, and thanks for uh, your interest on Sky News.